And that's where I'm going today. I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11, if you want to go there with me this morning again. And I'm so thankful for what God's doing in the lives of people. And spiritually speaking, I hope God allows me to set more tables and more chairs out. Because I want to, I, I tell you what, I, I want more people to know about the love of God. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not satisfied with me getting me to church. I want to get me to church, but I want to make sure we have more people coming because I want more people here. I, I don't want to be so concerned about what I'm getting. I want to make sure some other people are doing some getting. Man, I'm just going to read, and I, I know if, if I was to actually dissect more of this scripture right here, it'll talk about some things that are unmentionable. So I'm going to pull this one out and move on into our lesson. And such were some of you. Yeah, I, I like that answer, Brother Corey. Yes, I was. Can anybody else say, yes, I was? You see, the difference between living for God and all the secular ideas like AA and, and NA and all that, they want you to stand up and say, I am an alcoholic. But in Christ, I can be redeemed and I can be changed. I'm not going to come in here and tell you, hey, I'm still, no, 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 I want, yes, I was. Now, I drink all I want to drink now. I just don't want to drink. See, I got some of y'all there. You're like, wait, I can't. No, I don't want the old me. Because like the verse says, and such were some of you, but, and that, and that, excuse my vernacular, that's a big but right there. Ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. See, so, there's been some changing happening. There, there's been some stuff going on spiritually. Are you hearing me? She are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. How many is thankful today? I'm going I'm to read one more very familiar portion of scripture to you. John 3, 16 and 17. Because I like for God so loved. Love is amazing. Real love is amazing. For God so loved the world, and he's not talking about the terra firma. He's talking about you and I. God so loved you that he gave. Gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Let's place our Bibles down. Let's lift up our hands, open our hearts, and say, God, I want to hear from you today. I want to start this Thanksgiving week off. I want to be thankful. Lord, I pray and ask for your anointing, your unction, your help today, God, in this service, that someone online, someone in this building, somebody, life will be forever changed for an encounter with the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We give you honor and glory. We won't fail, Lord God, to recognize you for anything and everything that happens here today. And everybody said in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. You know, I, I'm, I'm not, well, I know most people don't actually read their Bibles. Even, even, main, even mainstream Christians don't really read the Bible. And so the reason some of us and some people are anemic is we can, is because they've not got the nutrients of the word to help you in your heart and your mind and the choices and decisions that you make. It, it, it's hard for God to chart the course of your life when you don't start the day even talking to him. You've already got your plan set. You get up, you go about your whole day, and at the end of the night, well, thank you, God, for the day. And he's like, you had no idea what I really could have done in your day if you would have let me chart your course. But the mirror of God's word reveals what kind of person I am. But what's amazing is the power of God's word reveals what kind of person I can be. And I hope that's what happens here today, that you realize in the hands of God you can be more than you ever dreamed. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, 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 I tell Erica many times, her being a, a single, amazing young lady, don't, don't look for the right one. Spend your time becoming the right one so God could send you the right one. Because if you don't live that way, you're going to settle. If you don't let God chart your life, he won't chart someone that is letting it into your, are you hearing? So I do want to start Thanksgiving week off by, by visiting a story that leads a, and I'm not going to mince words today. He's gonna, he leads a broken man to sit at the table of a king. the broken at the table of the king. In 2 Samuel chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. And, and I think, and I'm going to use evangelistic license here, they, David had to be re reminiscing and thinking and remembering his time with Jonathan and all the struggles that he went through and started remembering Jonathan of what, what can I do? Because he says, is there any yet that is left of the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Hear me, hear me what I'm saying. And there was the house of Saul, a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, because David just didn't think about it and pass it on. He, he wanted to do something Thankfulness compels you to do something. Thankfulness compels kindness. Many, many times we're momentarily thankful, but it never leads to actions of kindness. Because when you've done something for somebody and you turn around, well, man, they need to be more thankful for that. Then you really didn't do it, the thankfulness, because you expected I, and I don't want to go down that road today. I, I want to go down this road today. Are you hearing me? And when they called him unto David, and the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, thy, thy servant is he. Yes, I am. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God? And how, how many of us have experienced the kindness of God? And we stop right there, and we don't want to extend. It's a, it, can I can I be? It's horrible, and it's painful to realize how good God's been to us, and we turn around and get stingy with extending it back out. Now I'm gonna get where you live because the truth of your thankfulness is in how you want to spread that kindness. How far will you go to reach someone? that you deem unreachable, forgetting that at one point you were too. And Ziba said unto the king, now I'll be honest with you, I got to thinking about this, what was Ziba knew all along. But was there a fear there? But Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son. David's heart had to just jump right there. Jonathan, thinking about Jonathan. They had an amazing relationship, and Jonathan was helping David even when Jonathan's father, Saul, was pursuing him. Jonathan maintained his integrity and his rightness with God regardless of the animosity that his father had. Oh, see, I want you to get the, there's a parallel here, and maybe I just need to open the window up. I'm talking about a parallel between us this is a New Testament parable. We all of our father, the devil. But we've been bought by the king of kings, yes. the father of yes. lights who loves us. Amen. We've shifted families. Yes. Well, Amen. which is laying on his feet. He's damaged, David. A damaged kingdom and a damaged son. And the king David said unto him, where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, behold, he is in the house of Mahir, the son of Amiel in Lodabar. 
Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir. See, fetching is a is a is a is an article there that's it's 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 tenacious, it's it's on purpose, it's it's with ferociousness. I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get him. I'm gonna snatch him out of that mess and bring him to the king's house, to the king's palace. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was coming to David, here's his reaction. He fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth? And he answered, Behold thy servant. Uh, I'm your servant. You see, you have to understand with the conditions of the relationship, technically it would have been expedient for David to execute Mephibosheth because he was a, a challenge to kingship. Something's going to be king of your life. Something's going to be lord of your life. Something in your past is going to buy for headship and kingship in your life. And David said, and fear not, hold on. I'm not here for that. Well, I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan, my father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. You have to understand, Mephibosheth is hearing the opposite of what he's been thinking his whole life. Oh, you need to hear that. Mephibosheth is hearing the opposite of everything he's been thinking about the king his whole life. His whole life, he had to understand the rules said, I should die. The rules said, I got to be in secret. I got to hide. The king wants to kill me. And all of a sudden, he's realizing the king wants to love him. The king wants to show him kindness. Oh, you know, I, I, I don't want to blow my message here, but I'm telling you, God wants to show you love today. You may be of your father, the devil. And you may have brokenness and you may have pain and you may have issues, but God wants to show you kindness today. For Jonathan, thy father, saying, I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and thou shalt eat bread. My people, continually, we've been invited, church. And he bowed himself and said, listen, what is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dog as I am? They didn't have workman's comp or welfare or social security back then. He couldn't run down and say, look, I'm lame, I can't work, I'm injured or I'm disabled and I need help. They didn't have that. The only place they could find true help was through mercy, through grace, through kindness. Yeah. In fact, in 2 Samuel 4 and 4, it says, it tells the story of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth, when it was found out that Saul was killed and Jonathan was dead, it says, and Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. They, they were dead, and his nurse, his his the, the person responsible for taking care of him, it says, took him up and fled, and it came to pass as she made haste to flee, he fell. She's trying to keep him safe because of the order or the rules of the day and the rules of society. And I like to say it like this. She dropped him. You ever been dropped? You ever been let down? You're just following the rules of society and life and you find yourself broken. And the Bible says that he became lame. But in order for us to truly understand 
the magnitude of this. Let, let, me, let me interject this. When we talk about David, David wasn't killing lions and bears and giants every day. <laughs> For every day that he did have to take on a lion or a bear or a giant, there were thousands of days of merely watching sheep, herding livestock, and just simply being faithful. And, and here we see this David taking a moment, reviewing his life and recalling the kindness that Jonathan had showed him. And David's thankfulness leads him to showing kindness to the son of Jonathan, Mephibosheth. And I believe this, this, this story in, in 2 Samuel is an outstanding parallel of New Testament grace found in the Old Testament. It's a story of a broken man named Mephibosheth who's hiding out in the middle of nowhere. In fact, it, it references a place of no pasture. A pasture is a place where there's care and there's concern, but he's just out there merely trying to exist, hiding from what he thinks is certain death from the king. But yet we realize that the power of grace and mercy is at work. And we look at Mephibosheth, we quickly realize he represents all who are in the sinful condition of being broken. Some of us, dare I say, are damaged goods. Why would anybody want me? Especially a king. Why would a king want me? And so he's without hope because by birth, he's the enemy. Hallelujah. Second Samuel says, Smithibosheth was the son of Jonathan, who was the son of King Saul, and the best and most loyal friend that David ever had in one version. But both now Saul and Jonathan were dead, and at the end of the battle, when his father and grandfather were killed, that nurse grabbed him and ran to hide him from the king to save his life. And in trying to save his life, she dropped him. It's a picture of man's lame attempt of trying to save himself. <laughs> For this reason, he hid in obscurity and isolation. This reminds me because he figured he was better off poor and crippled than to be a prisoner in the prison system of Israel. This is a reminder of the fallen condition of man because he's born into a man's house who rebelled against God. We're all born into a, a relationship where Satan who sinned against God and we, we do more of our father Satan than we do of God and so Mephibosheth begins his whole life trying to hide to make sure the king doesn't find him. And some of us even hide today. Well, we don't actually run and hide. We just kind of fill our life with other things. We run from barroom to nightclub, from activities. And rather than seek peace in God, we fill our lives with amusement and vice and we tried to hide in the success of business or all sorts of stuff. And maybe it's education or upbringings or situations or whatever it is. We, we seem to run to the places so we can bury ourselves in worldly pleasures. And I'm so busy. Oh, I don't have time for that Jesus stuff. I don't have time. That king wants to kill me because I'm a mess. I'm broken. God, he doesn't want me in that house. He, he doesn't want me sitting at his table. And so... Despite where you choose to hide, because it's what people do when it comes to God, we hide, we avoid, we divert, anything but that. Stop and ask yourself, why does humanity have such a propensity against church, against Almighty God? What is it that we want away from the very Creator? Genesis tells us, and the eyes of them were both open and knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool day. And Adam and his wife 
hid themselves. They never did that before. They walked with God, talked with God. God loved them and there was fellowship. And they hid amongst the trees. I can't help but see the trees as a parallel of the cross. In the last days, the Bible says people will even be crying out for the mountains to fall on them so that God won't notice them. But I can tell you there's no escaping the eyes of God or let me say, the eyes of love. Revelations tells us in chapter 6, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every, every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Can I tell you that today those eyes are not angry? The eyes of God are not angry at, at you. He's made a way of escape, but the enemy's got us so convinced that, our, that, our, that, that, that God is so angry at us that it's tricked us into running from God and church is a problem and church is a, this and ch ah, that I'm uncomfortable there. Well, that's because we've taken on the nature of that illegitimate father. That one that didn't really love us but would rather drag us to the hell he's destined to. And we've taken on those attributes. We've done those things and we've, we've developed foul mouths and foul thoughts and we've, we've become more like our father the devil than the God that created us. Because 2 Chronicles 69 says, for the eyes of the Lord run, listen to this, because it's totally opposite of what we hear today about the world, run to and throw throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart, perfect toward him. If, if you fall in love with Jesus, you're going to find he's already in love with you. Did you miss that? What makes us afraid of a loving God? It isn't God's love that's frightening to a sinner. It's his holiness, righteousness, and judgment. Because we've all sinned. We've all a certain amount of fear to face God and all his power, his glory, and his holiness. But remember that God gave in love. God gave in love. God, for God so loved that he gave you. God is love and he looks through eyes of love before judgment. No parent could call themselves even a de decent parent that when their child first messes up, run in there and whip their tail. There's something about having a talk, hey, hey, hey. And we find that in the very first altercation when the Lord speaks to Cain, hey, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? But if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Notice what's going to meet you at the door if you reject the love. First mm -hmm. John 1 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So when we look again at Mephibosheth, first seven says, and David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, a failed, rebellious king? that I may show him kindness. Kindness. That is favor. That is merciful kindness, pity. It's, it's, it's deeds of care. I believe that this is the same question that God is, is placing before us today. He's asking us, who's drawn to me enough that I can show you kindness? Who will look to me today that I may reach into your life with my loving kindness? Not, not just kindness, loving kindness. You, you see, there's some people that'll do some kind stuff, but then all of a sudden, if they feel like they're being used, they want to stop. But God's like, hey, no, no, no. I'm here to be used, and I want to show you loving kindness. I want to show you loving kindness. See, see, see. When you get someone in the house of God that remembers that, there's something about them. They're going to knock doors and serve meals and want to, let's get some blankets to hand out. Let me re greet someone they walk into church. Go, 
Let me make sure that in this house, you're going to feel kindness. In this house, you're going to feel the love. When you come in here, you know you're welcome here because this is the house of the king of loving kindness. James, like only James can say in chapter 4, verses 8 to 10, listen to this. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Did you hear that? You see, our world and our society and our, our nature gets in the way that we want to push away from God. And God is such a gentleman that he will not force himself in your life. He will not. Sister Asia, I'm telling you right now, he will not force himself there, but if you'll open that door, the Bible says he stands at the door. If you'll open that door, you're going to have loving kindness walking. Mm. Cleanse your hands. Anybody invite people over to visit your house and you not clean your house? You make the best meal you can make. You make sure everything's spotless because, man, that's just something about it. When, when, you, when, you, when you fall, come on, ladies, the first time, first time you made dinner for that husband, the first time you, the first date, whatever, I mean, you could, what, you're going to put out the worst? Come on, man, you get out, you get out that perfume you've been sitting, you, you get that, you, man, you know you're going to get that little, that dress. Get your hair done right? Mix in a shower? <laughs> what are you going to do? You do all that and that joker shows up in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt going, what's up? You just knocked on the wrong door, fool. You hit down the road, Jack. No, he's going to show up. He's going to have flowers in his hand. He's gonna, why, there's something about a relationship of love that you don't, don't throw the power. Ah, you're going to get the best. I'm in love, and I want to give you all I got. That's why you purify your heart. Oh, no, no. I'm throwing away my little black book. Deleting all them. Oh. And as the Holy Spirit, God moves through the sea of humanity. I'm going to help some of you right here. Can I tell you something? The Holy Ghost has been working on people long before they walked into this church. So before you sit back and wonder what they're doing here, you've forgotten that you need to check why you're here. I hope the Holy Spirit of God can still move in your prideful life. We never need to forget that I'm still limping to the table today too. For those of you paying attention to the message, you got that. Some of you ain't going to get that. Through. i tell you what, I walked in here today and y'all think I'm fine, but I'm still limping to the table. I'm still coming to that table with my scars and my brokenness and my failings. I'm still walking to that table. Oh, let the redeemed the Lord stand in their feet right now and say, oh yeah, I'm coming to the table with my limp. With my, I'm still coming because I'm thankful for the grace and the loving kindness of the king. James, with an understanding, he, he, he says some things that in our vernacular doesn't fit, but if you'll analyze it, you'll realize the understanding that he says, be afflicted, mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. You start realizing all that junk that I thought was important ain't nothing compared to walking into the presence of God and allowing him to lift me up. See, all that stuff in your life, you're buying and supplying to lift you up. And all that stuff that you think makes you who you are will never do a thing for you. Not... In fact, it doesn't even remember you while you're alive. You better leave it. ain't going to think of you when you're dead. But you're in the eyes and the heart of an everlasting king that loves you with an everlasting love. All oh, the world wants you to buy into all that junk and all that stuff and the attitudes and the personas and the Facebook profile and the Instagram profile. I mean, you ain't going to find it there. You're only going to find it in the grace of a king. 
And so the spirit of God is in here right now. Is there someone that wants a relationship with the king? Because he wants to show you kindness. I can tell you right now, even with your brokenness, even with your sin, even when your God wants to show you kindness. God wants to show someone kindness today. That's why I'm here. The question is, is there somebody today that wants the love of God? Is there anyone here that would like to feel the love of God today? Is there someone here today that wants the loving kindness of God? Are you tired of the damage and the sickness of sin? Are you weary of worldliness? And it's, Are you tired of filling your life and making sure you got all the things that money can buy? But not the peace of God that passes all understanding. God's love is awesome because it's not just love. It's loving kindness. Amen. 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 Psalm 17 says, show thy marvelous loving kindness. O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee. We see some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Thou savest by thy right hand <laughs> them that put their trust in thee. For those that rise up against them, keep me as the apple of the eye. Oh, see, God looks at you with a love. God cares about you. He looks at you with a love that you, there ain't no man ever going to look at you like that. There ain't no woman ever going to look at you like that. Let me tell you something. There ain't no woman like the one I got, but she still can't look at me like my God can. Some of you older folks get that because, well, you just do. For those that rise up against them, keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Psalms 36 says, how excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. The psalmist goes on in Psalms 40 and says, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. Hear me, hear me, hear me what he's saying. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Where are my soul winners at today? Where are those that have experienced the loving kindness of God that you just you just can't walk through life and not say something? Come on, Sister Vida. I'm talking about the people. You're going through the grocery line, and you got that little bit to you about you. Hey, let me tell you, God done this for me. The loving kindness of God. Oh, that ride I got sitting outside, the loving kindness of God. See, some of us, we're so blessed, we start to think we've done it. We forget, oh, that's the grace of the king and the loving kindness of God that took an illiterate and blessed him. Took the rebel and redeemed him. Oh, withhold not thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually Preserve me, because I know y'all think you preserved you. I know you think you preserved you. I know you think that, that that great job that you worked and all them skills, and you got a resume thicker than a phone book. You got so many likes on Facebook. Everybody should know who you are. Your Instagram is hopping and popping. And See, the enemy wants you to buy into the endorphins that your body gives you when you get a little bit of success. I got the promotion. Yeah. There's only one real promotion I want. Oh, I got the healing. No, I'm not diminishing that. But the Bible lets me know, hey, I can enter in. I, 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 I need, even if I enter in heaven, Maine, that's still better than being whole. Oh. Uh, hey, I, I'm glad you're here even if you need a healing, but don't make it all about the healing. Make it about the healer. Amen. 
Psalm 63, he nails it. Because he makes a statement here. In Psalm 63 and verse 3. You need to know this one. Some of you think life is meat and drinks. I, I get it. Pull up at your house and be thankful that God gave it to you. How many got that text that I sent out this morning about stuff? You didn't get it, get with someone and say, hey, start forwarding those from me. Start forwarding those. He says, because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Because thy loving kindness is better than life. I don't care how good your life is. You can have the best life on the planet, but if you don't make it to heaven, what good did it do you? When you die and that's all there is for you and you go the wrong, oh, let me tell you, I want the grace of the king. Because thy love and kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. Oh, some of us have neglected that a little bit. You're so busy living, you don't even think about God now. Oh, yeah, you got the three squares, you got the nice fridge, you got that turkey weight. Pumpkin pie and Cool Whip. Because we think if our flesh is satisfied, it's all good. But, he, you know, he takes it deeper. He says, I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied. My so oh, you know, you know why you have to keep getting stuff? Because it never fills the void. It gives you an endorphin for a moment. Oh, don't get, don't, don't, don't kid me. I get you. I tell you, I know that day's coming. I know, I know, I'm going to say the dreaded word before Thanksgiving, Christmas. You drop that hand. We're going there, sis, right now. You got that little, oh yeah, you know what you, oh yeah. Yeah, you, you think it's a, the Lexus Christmas. It's going to be sitting out there with a bow on it. Brother Jonathan, I'm telling you. You want that white Lexus sitting out there with a big red bow on it. Uh, He's nodding, yeah, brother. <laughs> mine, mine wants me to redo all them cabinets in that kitchen. She might just get the bow. <laughs> Boy, <I'd, laughs> yeah, if I get this right arm healed up, I'd probably do it. But Lord have mercy. We got these wants. We got our heart set on things. But there's something that he, 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 the psalmist realizes, my soul shall be satisfied as with the marrow. In fact, all the blessed. I like the full stomach. I hope Thursday you get so full that you can either lay back in your bed in the couch. And I, I want you to get that feeling. But know that that lasts how long? What, two hours? And then you're back in there for that last piece of pie you don't want no one else to get? And you're willing to eat it because you just, you, you know, you don't want her to get it. You don't want one of them crazy kids to get it. You don't want, you don't want them guests to come in later to get it. Like, well, let me, get, let me just go ahead and get that one out of the way. Look, I ain't lying. If some of y'all coming over and there's that one, I'm going to eat that bad boy. You ain't, you ain't, <laughs> I'll tell you right now. I almost called up Sister Davenport and I said, hey, bring me that last piece of German chocolate cake you got sitting over there. Bring me that. Don't let Brother Davenport have that. Don't give that to David or that crazy little kid. Let me I like that feeling of getting stuff that I want. And we get so caught up in peas in the flesh, we neglect our soul. We got an entire world neglecting the soul for things that only last for a moment. But the psalmist says, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I, re oh my God, I got the grace of a king that I'm thankful for. I know their stuff and their things, but nothing trumps the grace and the gift of a king. It was me out there in Lodabar. It was me out there. I am the Fibbership. I am that broken man. But I'm thankful. 
that it doesn't matter to him, to God, that we're lame. And, and some of us are even lame brain a little bit and that he's still trying to pull us out of hiding and into his presence. Can I tell you where you sit right now in the pain and the problems of your life and, and, and the lameness? He knows your condition. He knows the damage that you have from the fall. And he's searching for you today who will receive him and invite him. Lord, I want the grace, the amazing grace of the king. God still searches out those. Second Chronicle tells us the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the I promise you those eyes are right now looking at this congregation, looking at you right now, and he wants to show himself strong in your life. Is there anybody here that wants the grace of a king? Can I tell you that there's nothing in this world where the sinner can hide that will keep God from seeing you as you are? People chase the things of this world for getting God. People are easily distracted away from a loving God. Even those who have been set free, how many of us caught our, have caught ourselves so caught up in the busyness of things that we miss the creator of them all? We find ourselves pursuing stuff of this life instead of the presence of a loving Savior. I read an, a, 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 a quote the other day from a director, and he was directing one of the most beautiful women that ever lived. Sorry, ladies. Sophia Loren. I guess I'm old. She couldn't act that day, Sister Hannah. She's beside herself weeping because she had lost some diamonds, valuable diamonds. And the director gave a very profound statement. Never weep over something that will never weep over you. Now you think about that, and if you know your Bible, we know that Jesus looked over and he wept. Because he's got loving kindness. That's loving kindness. I don't care what you get under your Christmas tree. I don't care how good you eat on Thursday. Oh, there's the love of a king. The grace of a king, loving kindness of a king, that's better than life. Nothing can fill the void like Jesus can. I, under, I, I, I understand, and I would remiss. I know there's, there's, there's momentary pleasure in life, and I know you can find something to appease for a moment. But your flesh will seek another and then another and then another and then another. But when you find yourself in the loving kindness and the grace of a king, you'll realize, I found what I've really been looking for and needing. He's looking to show loving kindness to someone today. Who David called for the servant of his house by the name of Ziba. He said, is there any of the house of Saul? And Zaba said, yes, Jonathan has a son. And David said, where is he? Let me, let me interject this right here. If you have a heart after God, you will have the same question in your heart. If you have a heart after God because you've been redeemed, you will have the same question in your heart every day. Where are they? Where's the lame? Where, where's the broken that need God? Where, where I, I got? Let me let me go get them and pull them out. You'll understand when you really are thankful in this week of Thanksgiving. When you are truly thankful, not for your stuff, not for your things, not for your popular, not but for the thing that matters, the grace of a king. You will want to find someone else. I want you to come to Jesus and meet him like I did. I want you to, I, I, you may love that, but let me bring you to the one with loving kindness. You want to, you'll want to do like David did. Let's fetch him out. Let's get after him. Let's find somebody. Let's find somebody so God can show them the loving kindness that I've been given. 
oh, let me find somebody else. Let me, let me reach somebody out. See, and all you're getting and all your stuff is trying to appease you from getting that that really matters to the king. Oh, see, that's the heart of a king. If you have the mind of Christ, the question will consume your days. Not just Sunday and Wednesday. You see, this is where we see the true grace of God at work. Mephibosheth himself had done nothing to deserve David's loving kindness or David's kindness. He was lame and could do nothing to better himself. He couldn't change the rules of the day. He couldn't change his lot in life. No matter how hard he tried or worked, he was never going to be nothing more than lame and broken from a failed lineage. You and I need the eyes of God. You and I need to be like David and say, to see and to love and to be kind like our God was to us. Who was David but a lowly shepherd boy? He wasn't nothing. In fact, he was the youngest and shouldn't even have been in line for anything. That doesn't sound like some of us. We, I don't know. I, don't, I get it. I'm still limping to the table. I don't know how I got here. I'm just glad I got here. I'm going to stay here. Oh, I don't want to get distracted from here to stuff. I don't want to get distracted out from behind the table of the Lord in the other thing. Oh, Lord, let me always have the eyes of God. And like David looking for someone to show loving kindness and grace to. Let me, if I'm going to be a Christian, let me be like Christ and, and look at people and love people and want to care about people. Let me bring you to the one that will love you with loving kindness. See, I understand how we are. Uh, you see, as people, we love to help those who we think deserve it. <laughs> That's why you're going to have your family around your table. But I wonder if you could find someone for that extra chair. Or you could actually make sure you have an extra chair so you can find someone that maybe We're like you and I before the Lord stepped into our life. How many has known God has helped you when you didn't deserve it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God turned around and took you and brought you a life you know you never could have earned or got yourself. God turned around and, and pulled some strings and did some things. I, I, I didn't get here on my own. I was the Lord ordering my steps. And just like in Mephibosheth, David makes the first move. God is making the first move. Mephibosheth, who we are representative of, would have languished in pain and poverty and loss forever had it not been for the kindness of a king who Mephibosheth thought was his enemy. Oh, See, some of you, and God's your enemy because of your imperfection. God's saying, I'll bring me your imperfections and I'll put them under my table. <laughs> you see, because when Mephibosheth was sitting at the table, he looked just like everybody else. Some of you will get that later. John chapter 6, verse 37, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me will I in no wise cast out. To verse 44, no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. You see, if it were not for the grace of God reaching to fetch us home, where would we really be today? We would still be scurrying around, running around in our life, hiding from God because of our worldly condition. And much like a cockroach, any time the light of grace come on, we'd scurry for cover. Oh, I don't know if I want to be here. Because like cockroaches, sinners love to live in darkness. Do their deeds in darkness. Men love darkness rather than light because of our, our, de our brokenness, our limp. When you come to God, it does reveal the imperfections. But see, and I'm going to talk to the saints that's what, you know, sometimes I get it. We want to show our Sunday best, but sometimes that's all that's showing up. You show up in your Sunday best. The best thing about you is your clothes. 
because you put it on on a Sunday morning, but come Monday, you're busy about your own business. Tuesday, you're busy. And no, and, and no. You, you forgot that you were once Mephibosheth, and there's a Mephibosheth out there that God said, hey, wait a minute, I want you. You have to ask yourself, what's been the fruit of your labors because of the grace the king gave you? Understand, God wants to save us from our sin. That's what the church is for. Our sin will be found out. It will be displayed in the courts of God if you aren't cleansed by the blood of Christ first. Mm. That's why John said, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That's the grace of God. That's the loving kindness. So Mephibosheth was brought before David the most powerful man. He held the power of life and death of all who came before him. Mephibosheth came not knowing what to expect, but I'm pretty sure in his mind he, he had an idea. In fact, I can venture to say he was probably pretty afraid. Great, I'm, I'm going before the very one that my grandfather chased around, I, threw javelins at. If you don't know your Bible, you don't understand the, 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 the depth of the mental agony he probably faced. He probably heard the stories. Ziba knew a whole lot. I'm positive he pretty much dreaded being brought to the court of the king, and he probably expected to be sentenced to death. How many of us come into the church? Oh, man, I'm doomed. I've done it. I made that mistake. That's over for me. I'm done. I, I, I can't recover from this. <laughs> All he could do is go in and fall at the mercy of the court. He knew, he knew he didn't deserve anything good. He was born into the home of Saul, the king's enemy. The Bible says in 9 and 6 of 2 Samuel, now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was coming to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. Isn't, isn't that what you do when you're full of trembling and fear? He comes, comes before the king. How many of us come before an altar? No. I knew better, but you should strike me dead, God. I understand. I, I, I'm coming into your, I, come, I don't even know if I can come into your court. So I come in with my, my face bowed. I come in with my head down. I, I got guilt and I got sin and I got shame. I'm not worthy to be in your presence, Lord. Mephibosheth walked in there with the weight of all this on his shoulders. And much like the sinner, we don't understand the grace of the king or the mercy of God and Many times we come in and think all we can expect is rejection from the holiness of God's presence. How, how, how could he reach into my broken life? Mephibosheth just didn't know. He, did he know that his father was once David's dearest friend? Isn't that what we all think when we come face to face with God in our lives? We don't understand the history of the relationship. We don't understand that there was a son that came to heal that broken relationship. You see, the Bible talks about in Genesis that Adam and Eve walked in the cool of the day. See, most sinners only think of being a servant to God. Never a son or a daughter. How can God accept me? I, 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 I'm nobody. I'm, I'm not even good enough to be a servant. I'm broken. I'm lame. God isn't really going to like me. And we have a proclivity of our human heart to pronounce that we have to earn a chance for acceptance. Let me come in here. Let, let, let me come in here and start acting right. And God will accept me. I need, I got good deeds and I got I got to be penance and I and I'm sacrificed. But let me tell you something. Salvation cannot be earned. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. I don't live right to be saved. I believe in God and got saved, and that's why I live right. 
It's a gift of love, grace, and mercy to be able to turn your life around. David extended that love, that grace, and that mercy to Mephibosheth, just as God will extend his grace and mercy to whosoever will today. His eyes go out to and fro, the Bible says. He's reaching for you right how you are right now. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Full of your pain. Oozing from wounds of doubt and fear. Limping because of a fall. God's grace looks past all that in order that he may bless you. Ephesians tells us, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love worth he loved us even when we were dead in sins and hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved and hath raised us up together and made us, are you ready for this? And made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hey, Mephibosheth, the king's invited you to the table. Not so that he can serve the table, but so he can sit at the table. I come to sit today. I'm not worthy to sit at this table, but I've been invited. Some would try to tell you that before you can come to Jesus, you've got to get your feet right. You've got to get your walk right. Get that lameness out of your walk. Get that lameness out of you. Get them thoughts out of your head. Get your legs right and come to Jesus. I, I, I've even heard in the church people criticize other folks' imperfections. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. I, I understand. See, as pastor, I got people coming to me that also think they're at the level of the pastor. Hey, you need to fix this. You need to, you need to tell them about this. You need to tell them about that. And I'm just sitting back, whoa, whoa. They want me to do this and they want me to do that. And I'm looking at them like, well, I haven't achieved the elevated status that you have because I'm still coming to the table limping. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have I progressed? Yeah. Yes, but not to the point where I got to start running people out of the. It, you're in a scary place when you think you deserve to be at the table. It's still the king's table. It ain't mine. You see, sometimes we, I don't want godly looking folks coming to my church. Just give me them Holy Ghost filled people that come to my church. Well, how do you get the Holy Ghost filled born again child of God into the church without allowing sinners to come in and put, put their feet under the table? See, some of us forget we were all brought out a little bar. We're all Mephibosheth. We're all limping. Oh, you may have been able to learn how to walk and hide that limp. Oh, no, I know some of y'all just sitting there, you got comfortable today. Yeah, you, 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 you ah, where, 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 come on, where you at? Let's be honest, let's be honest. You come walking in here because you deserve it. Oh, you're stately. Oh, yeah, you're stately. You've arrived. You got to that place. I got a suit and tie on. I, I, I sit with the pastor prior to service and we work out what we're going to do today. And those men will tell you, I'm the first one who I still came in here with a limp, brother. Brother Christian, you didn't come in here limping. I did too. See, when you see, you have to understand, God. God's not looking for those that don't that that don't limp. He's looking for those that are willing to sit at the table. See, when you got your own table and you got your own world and you got your own, and you've achieved some status and you don't need His table no more, He can't use you. Oh, you need to understand the grace of the king has moved in here. I still need that grace to limp my way to a table that is spread. Every Mephibosheth in the house needs to hear the good news. You got an invitation. You've been invited to the table of the king. Let me, let me be seated. Let me just cover this as I close. David showed. You need to understand. <laughs> David was the consummate limper. <laughs> I know enough that I'd like to slap him upside the head. What are you thinking? 
But then in turn, he could probably turn around and slap me too, Brother Jerry. Can we be real today? Can we just be people in need of God today? Can, hey, I'm thankful to be at Souls Harbor Church. You ain't going to find a more friendly, loving church. But let's make sure it's his table. It's his house. It's his grace. It's his loving kindness. That's better than life. I'll never live to a level and not need it. The Mephibosheth couldn't grasp the idea of grace yet. Couldn't, I, couldn't grasp the idea of loving kindness, of, 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 of reaching out and, and wanting to do something for me. Second Samuel 9, 8, and the Bible says, and he bowed himself and said, what is thy servant thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I? Now, listen, you have to understand something. I understand how the Bible looks at dogs. I don't look at dogs like the Bible looks at dogs. Y'all know that. I like my puppies. Yeah, that's right. Sister Hannah, we like our puppies. But a dog, if you see, unlike that, the world turns everything up. You know, in, in the rap world, hey, he's my dog. That's supposed to be a good thing. But in the Bible, a dog is one of the worst things you could call somebody. So Mephibosheth and David paints a picture of what happens when you and I come to Jesus. That one glance, that look, as we step into his presence, the majesty, the power, the glory of a holy and loving God and a man that realizes, what am I doing here? And fall before, like 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 Mephibosheth did, and ha 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 ha. I shouldn't even be here. I'm just a dog. And David says, "Fear not. I'm turning things around. I I'm going to show you loving kindness." Uh, he says, Fear, "I will surely show you kindness." He he you need to hear that again because David is a picture of the Lord today. Fear not. I want to show you kindness. God wants to show you kindness. Whoever you are, wherever you've been, the scars, the marks, the wounds, the mistakes, the damage, the limping and the lameness, God wants to show you kindness. Oh, I'm speaking to somebody today, I'm speaking to somebody online. What about Ziba? What do we see in him compared to Mephibosheth? I'm going to make a point here. Ziba always remained a servant. But Mephibosheth became as a son. When Ziba was in the palace as David's servant, he was a servant and always carried out orders, but never allowed himself or thought of himself as a son. What picture does he give us today? Ziba represents those of the church who will always think of themselves as nothing more than a servant. They'll look at doing things in the in the church or around the kingdom of God as checking time or fulfilling responsibilities. Bound by the mindset to try to do the will of God that they might be accepted and just, I need to do this so that God can recognize that I'm here and I want to go to heaven. And so those people never allow a re relationship of devotion to develop. They're doing time so they can get back to what they really love. Because there's privilege to be in the presence of the king. See, 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 the enemy and the things of this world want you so distracted to where you're looking more forward to what you do tomorrow than the fact that you're in the presence of the king today. And so you've come here as a servant. But I'm looking for some Mephibosheths that want to be sons and daughters. Yes. Some folks had to say, wait a minute, I, 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 you don't understand. I'm, I'm thankful to be in the presence of God today. Amen. I'm thankful for what I've When I look around and I'm watching someone sing and someone worship and someone shout and someone read their Bible and someone even give themselves 
You're going to hear preachers tonight. You're here preacher now. People that are, are in a relationship. I'm talking about a relationship with God. That's a similar picture of those who just attend church. I, I get it. And yes, there's a, a faithfulness that, 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 that should be there, but shouldn't it be deeper than that? What kind of husband is he? He's just checking time and coming home, but he wants to be someplace else. How many of us live a, lot, a, a life like that with God that I'm so quick to want to, I want to go be someplace else that I just check in time here. I hate the church. I don't like the church. I don't like the people. It causes me to be. I got to walk my P's and Q's. I got to be nice. I got to be sweet. You know why we think like that? It's because we forgot about load bar. We forgot about our lameness. And we forgot that how many times God's had to overlook all that stuff with us. And we turn around and we don't want to extend that loving. Something happened in our heart. Something's wrong. The enemy has tricked you and deceived you and did a bait and switch on you. And now you'd rather be home getting all your likes on Facebook or on Instagram or, or playing with this hobby or this habit and all that. And you just, oh, God, it's time to go. Oh, let's go. And, and you, you haven't made it in time for prayer because talking to God ain't that as important. You just check in time. And the enemy's been successful in making you think that the grace of the king isn't important anymore. You see, there ought to be something about us when we get in our Father's presence. But we're only here to get something from the Father rather than getting close to the Father. You see, this is covered in the Bible. That's, that's why the one brother snubbed the other brother coming home in the story of the prodigal. I may never say nothing to you, but I watch how you react to new people. I watch how you react to outreach and giving Bibles, especially those in a reputation, especially those that are wanting a title or a position. I, I, I watch as a pastor. I have to watch. I have to watch your heart, your love. That, that's my response. Don't, don't ask me to be defunct in my responsibilities as, 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 as I know you think I got all these other things I should be doing, but let me tell you something first and foremost. I'm watching your heart and with your relationship with God. Are you punching time or do you really want to be in his presence? Have you just turned to just serving God as that little role that you got and that's it and you walk out? God, God okay, that's the, the, look, I love my wife, but I don't want her just doing the, the requirements of society. I don't know. There better be some intimacy because he's into me, you see. Are you into Jesus or just coming to church? It'll show in what you do on your days when you're free to do what you want to do. You see, when you love the Father, when you love the Father, when you love the Father, you'll love his children. You don't believe me? Let me mistreat some of your babies. Let me mistreat some of your... Why are you going to get upset? Wait a minute, you should love them like you love me. Hey, come on, brother. John. You, uh, hold on, man. I'm going I'm to watch how you talk to my treat my kids. So why do we turn around and get upset when pastor says you better be in love with Jesus by showing how you love his kids? Where's your loving kindness for your brother and your sister? Your si Where's your loving kindness for, for the Mephibosheth out there that's just like you were? Where are you when they're handing out blankets and meals? Where are you at prayer time? Where, where are you? Look, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm pointing out, wait a minute. How, how many want a good relationship with your spouse? I get you got stuff to do, but that should never replace in you guys being you guys. However, however y'all do you, you need to be doing you. Well, that's, 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 that's exactly it every day. Is there a perfect marriage? Please stand up. I need some help. I, I love it. I'm watching. I'm watching. And I'm not going to call no. I'm watching husband and wife looking at each other and talking right now. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know why? Because you realize I just don't want to spend time with you. I want to be in love with you. Uh, 
I'm going to get off that before we get G13 or above here. See, there's a lot of people that don't truly understand their position with Jesus. You're stuck being a servant when he wants to make you a son. You think you just need to come in here and it's a constant servant being demanded and ordered what to do instead of being coming a son and it's like, hey, I'm a part of this. What can I do? I'm going to show my love by what I do. I'm going to show my love by what I get. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not a servant here. I'm a son. You better, but when I walk around, oh man, this is my house too. I'm going to pick up, I'm going to clean up, I'm going to do that. You better, why, why? It's not because I've been asked to. It's because, hey, this is my, this is my house too. Mephibosheth come limping in the house, come limping in the palace, and he put his feet under the table because I, I, I belong here. Some of you, I belong here. This is my house. I've been born into this thing. I got the grace of a king to become a son, to become a son. Because if you know Jesus as your Savior, then you've been, been adopted into the very family of God. John 1 and 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's stand. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a child of the king. Yeah. I, I may be limping, but I'm still a child. Listen, listen, listen. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if the children, then heirs, heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also joined together. What's the difference between being a servant and a son? The servant is bound by law, but doesn't get to live in the house forever. There comes a day when the servant will be separated from the family. Are you hearing me? But a son or daughter is forever a part of the house and is never an outcast. Paul says in Galatians, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth the son made of a woman made under the law to redeem that were them that were under law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. The grace of David the king brought Mephibosheth from a place of hiding, a place of fear, a place of shame and brokenness to a place of privilege and sonship. You know, I don't know if you'll hear this, but my son's made a lot of mistakes. I'm a son and I made a lot of mistakes. Anybody got any mistakes? Anybody got any lameness? You know, Albert, this is the Lord's house. It's his. And when you're a son, I can't never say you don't belong. You're born here. I've been born in this. That's why we baptize you in Jesus' name. You get, that's why Jesus said you must be born again because when you're born into a son that devil can't say nothing to say you're his you're his you're his you, you, you can't kick me out of my own house <laughs> Mephibosheth though limping was always welcome at the table. Still lame of his legs, he was part of the family. Yes, yes, there's, there's damage in his history, but his future was prepared. He would always walk with a limp. He would always reflect the image of the fall. He'd always be limping and leaning 
We, some of us, we're always going to carry those scars, those wounds and hurts of life. But Jesus lifts those burdens from off our shoulders. <laughs> I may walk with a limp, but I'm always going to sit as a son. We've been welcomed into the family of God. I take on his name. You, you can't remove his name from me. You can't unborn me into the house of God. Poor, wretched, lame, full of past defeats. You and I are still welcome at the royal table of God. That's why I celebrate Thanksgiving because the grace of a king that beckoned me to a table I did not deserve. I never really will be good enough, perfect enough. But he said, I don't care about that. I'll make up for that. I've set a place for you at my table. I got a place for you. His grace is sufficient. Someone got a problem with you being here, send them to Jesus. Someone giving you a bad time, send them to Jesus. One time I got in trouble. I got pulled over. Young man, you know, we get pulled over when we're driving around. Well, I had a man in the church that had one of them police scanners. I don't have enough time to sit around and listen to police scams. Scandals about everybody else's life. I'm trying to live my own life. Anyway, I walked into the church, didn't know this, and he pulls me aside. Hey, heard about you getting pulled over the other day. So there I am standing in church, and he says this in front of people. I'm embarrassed. You know, I'm trying to live for God. I'm brand new in church. But I had been around a Brother Monroe, his dad and he had told me one time he said you're going to get people that are going to question your right to be here because of your past and, and he taught me something he said he taught me to say something and so I had that in my pocket and so when this man cornered me brother Lawrence he cornered me because, hey, I was guilty. I was speeding. I'm not kidding around. I was speeding. So I asked him, well, are you here to help me or hinder me? Are you going to meet me at the altar tonight and pray for me? Let me help some of y'all. You see issues around here? Are you here to help or hinder? Maybe they're limping. They need to help to the tape. Oh, Maybe you need to get their chair for them. Maybe you need to get their drink for them. Maybe I, I know what it's like to be a limping son here. His mercy is everlasting. His grace is sufficient. His love is forever and everlasting because I'm a son. You're a son. Jeremiah 31 and 3 is one of my favorite all-time verses. I want to give it to some of you. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. That may not mean to you what it means to me. You ever had your heart broken? You ever been in love and it gets rejected? Yeah, you ever been in love and they walk out on Ever, you ever been through a hard time where someone you gave yourself to turned around and said, nah, I'm out. Jesus was acquainted with grief. He was rejected. See, see, some of you, some of you need to listen to people that may be your junior because you didn't go through what they've been through because maybe you weren't going where they were. When you felt that, Brother Bruce, and you feel rejection. You feel, uh, uh, ain't nobody understanding like us a bit.
You ought to turn around and be thankful for those of us that have survived rejection, survived divorce, survived failure, survived. You need to turn around and say, oh, man, I can respect that. Let me tell you, so I look around this room, I see people to be respected. Ain't nobody got here on the easy street. Ain't nobody, sister, ain't nobody got here easy. We got wounds and we got hurts and we got pain and we're limping. But we still got a seat at the table. I'm not shouting because I get it right all the time. I'm shouting because I got a place at the table all the time. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. 